So in the last video, we have seen module instantiation, how we can compile simpler uh, modules to model more complex circuits, right? So this was the syntax we used to module name, instance name, then we list the ports and we connect these formal ports with the actual port. This style is a named uh, port mapping. This connecting ports, we call it as port mapping. Okay, so this is a named port mapping. Uh, there is one more style which is called the positional port mapping. Uh, now, if you look at your full adder and half adder circuit, remember we built it using uh, gates directly instantiated. Now, if you compare this usage of gates with the instantiation style that we use here, you'll find like this is more or less like instantiation. So we instantiated an XO gate here and we instantiated an AND gate here. The only difference is here we have a module name and instance name, but here we only have the name of the gate, which is a keyword, and then the list of ports. So it is possible to put an instance name here also. Okay, and it is encouraged that you put the name. So gate type give some name to the gate. So this is more like the instance name. And this is the actual port mapping. And again, the difference is here we used name to one. This is positional one. So the first one is always output, other two are input. Here you cannot modify this to name to one. Uh, you have to always follow the positional one. So this style is also possible when we use gates. Okay, so till now we were discussing gate level modeling in Vitlog, how we can build circuits by directly using gates. And using this style, actually you can model any combinational circuit in Vitlog because combinational circuits by definition, they don't have any memory and they are composed only of gates, right? So you can build any combinational circuit using this style. Uh, but it may be more convenient uh, to model your circuit using so-called the operators in Vitlog. Now the operators that you are going to see here, uh, they are all coming again from a C programming language. You have seen all of them before, but the interpretation may be slightly different. Okay, so let's discuss uh, one operator at a time. So for example, I want to build my own AND gate, suppose. So let me call it AND gate. And we have two input. Let me call it I1, I2, and output O. Okay. So this is how the input and output from the AND gate looks like. Now, previously we have seen how to do it using gate. Now, if you are using operator, we have an operator, this one, which you have seen in C language also, which is called a bitwise AND operator. So we have this guy here also. So you can simply write I1 and I2. This will represent a bitwise AND operation between I1 and I2. And we need to assign that value to O. Okay, so this is how we do it in C. Here in Vidlock, this is perfectly fine. In addition to this, you need an additional keyword called assign. So you have to write assign O equals I1 and I2. Now why assign is here, uh, don't ask me because that is the freedom of the person who designed the language. So syntactically, when you're assigning the value to O, you need to put this keyword assign here, okay? Uh, I will not say like in every assignment statement, you will have to use assign keyword because later we will see a different style. Uh, there you may not use assign. But at this point, uh, whenever you use output equal to something, or you can do it for any intermediate wire also, we'll see it. Uh, you can use assign. Okay, so let's quickly save it and test whether it is working. So I have, so let's call it AND gate and we will quickly test it in model C. Okay, so I'm giving values one and zero to the input and the output is zero. 
Now if I give one one as input, you will see the output is one, right? So this is like a, a regular AND gate. Now using same method, you can model other gates also. Uh, you can have OR operation. This is the operator. XOR operation. This is the operator. The caret. NOT operation. That is tilde. Tilde is the operator. For example, uh, output is NOT of I1. Okay, so you'll have to write it like this. Okay, O is tilde I1. So if you change the source code, we are supposed to recompile. So let me recompile. And if the wave window is already open, you can simply type restart. He will restart the simulation. Okay. If it is not open, you have to launch the simulator. So let me make input as one. Output is zero. Now input as zero. Output is one, right? Why I2 is in blue color, we will discuss later. I'm not using I2 here anyway, so it's fine. Now, if you want multi input, that is more than two input, there is nothing special. You can simply write I1 and I2 and i3 and i4 okay so this will represent like a four input and get perfectly fine okay so let's do one thing let's model our full adder whatever we wrote here using operators instead of instantiating gates okay so i am simply copy pasting the inputs and output now sum, you know, sum is the XOR of three inputs. So I can write AXO, PXO, C in, no issue. Similarly, C out, you can write them in a single line. So we can say A and B or B and C in or with a and C in okay now again like C there are operator precedence no even I don't remember all the precedence what we do is we safer side we put the parenthesis where it is supposed to be a single operation okay so this basically means and A and B and B and C and A and C then or them. Okay, so the file name I haven't changed, so I will recompile with the same file name. But you will see here there is a new module because the module name is full adder here. Okay, again, if it is confusing, always keep the file name and module name same. Okay, so let's simulate this one and add wave. So let's make all input one, one, one. You can select multiple signals by shift and your mouse button and force together also. So I made a mistake here. I should have written S equal to, I wrote O equal to. Okay, corrected. Again, we need to recompile then log then restart okay force one 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 and run so s is one c out is also one one plus one plus one is one one right so that is working so using operators uh, you can combine multiple operations into a single statement so that is very useful now let's see what happens if we use these bitwise operators as prefix to signals with more than one element that means arrays right uh, the best example for that may be the circuit for finding 
once complement okay so once complement let me write a module which can do once complement and suppose i have an input which is 8 bit wide let's say 7 down to 0 in and i have an output which is also 8 bit wide so we write 8 down to 0 out okay what i need is i want this out to be one's complement of this in okay so one way to do it is you can say assign out of zero okay this represents the zeroth bit of out is not of in of zero okay so you complement zeroth bit or the rightmost bit of in and give it to out and you can follow the same for all eight bits again mistake seven here all all eight bits but instead of doing it you can simply do out equal to tilde of in so what it does is it will do the inversion of every bit okay bitwise it will do inversion and will assign to out so every bit in in will be inverted and it will be assigned to the corresponding out so we need to compile again we log and gate but we sim one scope So here, okay, let me make the input as 11001111. And if you look at the output, you will see it is 00110000, which is complement of this input. Okay, so that's a useful thing, very useful. Even our AND and OR operator can be also used in the same way, okay. If you write like this, out equal to AND of IN, like this, what it means is it is supposed to AND each and every bit of IN together and assign that value to OUT, okay? So in that case, OUT won't be 8 bits wide, OUT should be only 1 bit wide, okay? So let me repeat again, this is what we call as a reduction operation. If you put this AND operator, or or operator for that matter what it does is if the input is an array if it composed of more than one bit it will or each of them together and will assign the final result to this output so what does it mean here the out will become one only if every bit in the input is high if any of these bits is low output will become zero same way if you put like this output will become low output will become zero if and only if every bit in input is zero okay so this method you can use to find whether your input is all zeros or your input is all ones okay so uh, useful thing now with xor also you can do it so if you put xor like this what does it mean your out will become high only if the number of ones in the input is odd okay so whenever the number of ones is even output will become zero okay so this is very useful in in finding something called parity uh, which you may study later so basically to find whether the number of ones in the input is odd or number of ones in the input is even we can check this okay so let's try it keep the same module name since we are just testing it recompile and we can just restart this time okay so let me make the input as 11001111 okay so we have five ones in our input and if i run i will see my output is one because i have odd number of ones in my input now if i make the input as this 
I have even number of ones in my input, so the output goes zero. That's also a useful feature. Using similar reduction, you can implement XNOR, NAND, NOR functions also. So if you put a tilde in front of here, uh, it simply means this is a XNOR operation. Okay, so we have XOR inversion of it XNOR, and this is NOR, and this is NAND. Okay, so again remember this style we can use only if your input is composed of an array like this. If this were like in one in two and if you want NAND we'll have to do something like this right in one and in two you and them then you do the negation so that becomes NAND. If it is a single array we can write like this instead of writing not of in one of zero and in one of one and so on and so forth if it was a array like this. So instead of writing like this we can use that reduction symbol and can easily implement it. Okay. Now if you have two arrays as input and if you use this operator let's see what happens so I have two 8-bit input what I'm doing is I'm doing i1 in 1 and in 2 okay you can guess what will happen this is a bitwise and operation So let me make my input as 1100110 zero, zero, one, one, zero, zero, as the first input and the second input as force 00001111 zero, 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 one, 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 one. and when you run you can see the output is 00001100 zero, 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 one, one, zero, zero. so essentially he is doing a bitwise AND operation right 010 zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, 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 one and here four zeros so it will be zero okay so in this video that's it so you can try all the gates here by using operators so using operator you can model a gate with any number of input no issues 10 input 100 input and you can combine multiple operations in a single statement to have a more complex expression than using than directly instantiating gates and modeling your circuit so this will be much easier than directly instantiating the gates whether this has any disadvantage compared to the other one no whether the other one has any disadvantage compared to this in terms of uh, the final hardware or anything no okay so the only only difference is here the code size may be lesser uh, when you are typing maybe you have to use fewer number of lines fewer number of characters but the final hardware that is modeled by this and the final hardware it may be finally get generated at some point will be exactly same okay so keep that in mind thank you